welcome back to my channel. I just got finished filming a very long, very chatty get ready with me slash life update video. And I watch these on other people's channels, so I figured I would film one today and share with you the skincare routine that I do as well as you know, hair and some of the new makeup products that I've been really loving lately. And this video is sponsored by a company called eSalon.com who were kind enough to send me the cruelty-free hair products that I used in this video, which I will list in the description box. And also they gave me a code so that if you want to try their products, it is buy one, get one free for their shampoo and conditioners. And let's get into the video. So I'm just going to do my getting ready routine. I don't do all of these things every single day, but when I've got the time, um, I do most of these. Um, and I'm just going to start with skincare. I haven't showered yet. My hair hasn't been washed in a couple of days, so I'm going to do that in a little bit. But uh, I just thought I would kind of chat a little bit about what's been going on with us for the past... I guess week or so. So Alex and I and Beckham, our dog, are in Arizona right now. Um, we, sorry, I'll just show you this before I keep talking. It's a Derma Roller. I got this one online about a year ago. And if, if you haven't used one of these before, it's got little spikes on it. And it's supposed to stimulate cell growth. And I think it exfoliates a little bit as well. And it feels kind of cool on your skin. Um, they're just tiny little needles. They don't, they don't really prick the skin, but it's hard to explain unless you've tried it. They're not very expensive. Usually you can get one for five or ten dollars. Um, and it just feels like a really nice facial massage. It gets the blood flowing and it's probably going to turn my face really red any minute, but it's kind of just what happens. It goes away after a couple of minutes when I'm done. But, uh, <clears throat> so I'll explain kind of what's going on with us. Um, we got rid of our apartment that we were living in. We actually had the ground floor of a really nice house. It was a brand new house. Uh, we were living in an area called Burke Mountain Coquitlam. And we drove from Canada all the way through Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Utah, and Arizona to come to Phoenix. And it was such a beautiful drive. We came with only what we could fit in one rental car. And we had our dog Beckham with us in the car as well. So we didn't really bring very much stuff with us at all. We sold all of our furniture. We gave away a lot. By the end of it, I had a bunch of miscellaneous items that I knew we didn't really want to keep or bring with us. So what I did was I just put a mat out in our kitchen and I put all the items that we wanted to give away on that mat and I put a Facebook uh, marketplace ad saying that I have <clears throat> free items that I'm giving away if anyone wants to come pick them up and I also did a Craigslist ad and within two hours everything was gone. So many people came and just grabbed a few items, some people grabbed a lot and it was really cool because it was nice to see how grateful people were to get something that they actually really needed for free um, and things that I wasn't using that were just kind of in our home. And it felt good to kind of just let it go and let other people use it and enjoy it. So that was kind of an interesting experience. And so we just got in the car and drove to Arizona. And we're super, super grateful to our friends that are allowing us to stay in their beautiful home. Um, if we didn't have this right now, we would not have a base here in Arizona. And it's really nice to have this place here while we are trying to figure everything out for our you know, next chapter of our lives here. Um, things work a lot differently in the US than they do in Canada, even just the process of finding a rental place. Um, you know, All of the houses that or apartments that I've ever lived in in Vancouver, I just went on Craigslist and the same day you know, chatted with the owner and rented out the place, no problem. Whereas here, I guess because it's more of a vacation type of area, it doesn't work like that. You have to go through um, a system. You have to fill out questionnaires and you have to meet with um, leasing companies and you don't actually get to speak to the owner of the house or the condo. And we are eventually looking at buying a place as well. And so we're just kind of figuring all that out. And we've been spending the first few days just driving around, getting to know different areas 
and deciding where we want to live. And it's the best way I can explain it. Like, it feels really, really good to be here, but it's just this up and down of emotions of like really excited and then a little bit scared and, you know, just all of these emotions happening at once. It feels so brand new and with that does come a little bit of fear. You know, like what if we don't meet people, like a big group of friends or, you know, what if it's not what we thought it would be or what if we aren't sure about which area we want to move into and all of that kind of comes to the surface when you're actually here um, and trying to figure it all out. So. That's kind of how I've been feeling lately. Okay, what I've been using now on my face is a dry brush. I use this all over my body. Um, it's really, really good for improving circulation, getting the blood flowing through your body. Um, it's kind of a beautifying thing as well as just a really good lymphatic drainage massage. And I'm always careful to choose the brushes that have synthetic bristles and not animal um, bristles, so cruelty free. Alright, let's get a good brush going on there. I've heard different things about exfoliation. Some people like to be really, really gentle with the skin on their face and like don't, try not to touch their face or don't use abrasive exfoliants on their face. But I'm the complete opposite. I actually really like very abrasive um, exfoliants and I just go for it. So some people who have sensitive skin won't use something like this on their face and just keep it more for the skin on their body. But if it doesn't break you out and it feels good, then go for it. Alright, that's enough of that. I'm going to brush my teeth now. I got this sample at Sprouts the other day. It's a licorice... Ayurvedic toothpaste with organic neem. So I'll show you that. All right, now I'm gonna floss. Okay, since this is a very unfiltered, uncensored type of video, different than what I often do, I thought I would just share something with you. I am really feeling like called to make more, I won't say authentic, because the videos that I do make come from the heart always, but they're much more edited with, you know, certain lighting and, you know, I'm, I'm aware of that because I try to make the videos look pretty, if that makes sense. And even though these videos are much easier to upload because there's not much editing to them it is a little bit more challenging or a little bit like harder to just put yourself out there completely uncensored I don't know do you can you relate to what I'm saying about that it's like there's a little bit of uneasiness that I feel with being you know unedited uncensored and just sharing and speaking from the heart on camera and putting that up you know for the world to see but on the other side, I feel like I really want to do more of that, if that makes sense. I'm still going to do the edited videos and the fun videos and put music and all that stuff. But I don't know. Sometimes I just want to say, you know, let's just put the camera on and just be myself and just chat. And I think that can be of value to people as well, just to see that everyone is normal. Like, you can put edited makeup photos of yourself on Instagram or on YouTube or whatever. But deep down, we're all just people and we all brush our teeth. We all <laughs> are without makeup sometimes. And yeah, so I thought that I would kind of film this video as, as kind of a part of that. All right, I'm going to jump in the shower now and I'll show you what I've been using on my hair. A company called eSalon.com were kind enough to send me uh, quite a few products, cruelty-free hair products. I've almost finished the shampoo and it smells amazing. So I'm going to be using the shampoo, the conditioner, and my favorite is this moisturizing mask. I just leave it on my hair for like 10 minutes and uh, put most of it on the ends of my hair where it's really, really dry. Alright, so I'm fresh and showered and I'll show you the deodorant I use as well. The label's kind of faded. It's called the Kaya Naturals 
Takesumi Detox Bamboo Charcoal Deodorant. And it smells like roses, which is the reason I got it. And it just looks like that. I think charcoal is like the new thing. I've noticed that charcoal is in face products, bath products, deodorant, toothpaste, pretty much everything. Um, and so I use this deodorant. And it's actually pretty good. Sometimes natural deodorants aren't as, I guess, strong or effective as regular deodorants, but I do like this one. I just want to chat with you a little bit about over-censoring ourselves. And I'm not sure if this is something that you can relate to, but lately this has kind of just been in my mind and something that I wanted to share with you guys. I think with social media being a big part of so many of our lives, there is this level of censoring that many of us do, myself included, and I think that there is, you know, a place for censoring things. Obviously, you don't want to offend people, so you're careful what you post online or what you say or the language that you use or, you know, so many other things. It's nice to present this beautiful, perfect image and have all your photos be perfectly, um, you know, matching each other and with a theme and have, you know, this, this life that looks so perfect and to have this image that is curated, which appears to be, you know, a work of art, uh, this, this perfection online. Um, but then there's a point where it gets to be overly censored. I feel that sometimes over censoring things, over editing things, over filtering things online, while it might create a beautiful image, it sometimes takes away the authenticity and the personality of the person creating, if that makes sense. And so I'm trying to find that balance where I feel that I can share myself, my own personality through my videos, through the photos, through whatever posts I share online. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'll admit that sometimes I will film a great video or I'll say something that I feel, you know, oh, I really want to share this idea. And then I'll look back at the footage and think, oh, that was a terrible angle or I didn't like that lighting or I didn't like how my voice sounded. And then I won't share it. And I think that when I started doing that too much, I kind of realized that, hey, like this is really great content. This is, you know, really great information that might help someone. And I love edited beautiful filters and gorgeous Instagram photos. I'm not saying that that doesn't have its place. I definitely do love that and I find it a form of art. Just like I love makeup and different makeup looks and I'm not saying that I'm never going to wear makeup and I'm just going to be fresh faced all the time. But it's more about finding a balance of sharing authentically without over censoring. So if you get what I mean by that, then comment in the description box down below and I think it's something that a lot of us experience. And the big issue I have with it is I find it to be very isolating. I find that if you're not connecting with people in an authentic way and really able to share your genuine personality quirks and your humor and, you know, all the little aspects of yourself, then you're actually preventing yourself from connecting with other people who can relate to those things. No, and that's why I find it so refreshing when people I've seen online where uh, makeup gurus, makeup artists show their acne or show, you know, their skin without any makeup and, you know, other people, you can read in the comment sections, really relate to that because they're like, okay, you know, if this person who is appearing to be perfectly made up all the time is also experiencing these other human things that I go through, and it kind of connects you in a different way. And my channel is all about connection and all about sharing my experiences, sharing ideas, positive inspirations, and just love with you guys. And I'm always open to new ways of doing that. All right, so I'm gonna use some castor oil on my face right now as um, kind of a really deep moisturizer. This is probably going to be a really long video because I've been talking so much. My mom kind of introduced me to castor oil a long, long time ago. She uses it on her eyelashes and on her eyebrows to get them to grow um, to be thicker. 
and I don't really use it for that, but if that happens as a result, then that's great as well. If you've never used castor oil before, you'll notice that it's like super, super, super thick. Probably one of the thickest consistency natural oils that I've ever used. Um, but that's what makes it so, so moisturizing for your skin. It takes a good, I'd say half an hour to actually fully absorb into your skin. So I wouldn't put it on like right before you leave the house because you're going to be super shiny like my face is right now. Um, but I really, really like it. And I like how it leaves your skin feeling moisturized all day and all night. And this one is Home Health brand. I think I got it from Whole Foods. And it's just regular cold pressed, cold processed castor oil. All right, put a little bit of perfume on. This is the Pacifica Gardenia perfume. And then I'm going to put on some of this E-Salon Get Heated Thermal Protect Hair Mist. That's the bottle there. This stuff smells like a delicious smoothie. And I just kind of put a lot of it all throughout my hair. I know that blow drying your hair does dry out your hair. Um, so some, sometimes if I take a bath at night, I'll just let my hair dry naturally so that I'm not, you know, using so much heat on it and drying it out completely. All right, that's probably enough. Okay. You might not believe this, but when I was 16, I had ringlets, absolute ringlets. I had long, curly, dark brown hair, and I'm Italian, and everyone said I looked really Italian when I had uh, my hair like that, and what happened is I bleached it. I got, you know, I had started with highlights, and then I kept getting more and more and more highlights, and I straightened it all the time and curled it, and eventually the curls just kind of became a lot um, looser. But if I do this to my hair sometimes, just leave it like that, then it will dry with like a loose curl. But maybe I'll find a picture somewhere and show you guys sometime. But my hair used to be like, and it was really, really pretty. I liked it. But you got what you got. All right, I'm gonna blow dry my hair. I will make you sit through listening to all of that because it's gonna be like 20 minutes of loud blow dryer noise. But I will just continue filming this once my hair is dry. All right, so I'm gonna put some curls in my hair and I'm just using this one inch diameter curling wand. And what I do is I just take one section of hair and I just wrap the hair starting from the root all the way down to the tip of the hair. And I always go in the direction away from my face. And this one heats up, I think, to like 450 Fahrenheit, so it's quite hot. And I leave it for about five to seven seconds each. And let it go. Curl is kind of a loose curl. Something that I've heard from a few people about um, being in Arizona is that because of the air being so dry and there's very little moisture in the air, that it's always a good hair day. So we'll see how true that is. Because in Vancouver, it was kind of the opposite. I could spend an hour doing my hair and then I go for a walk outside for 10 minutes and it is just really frizzy and it doesn't look anything like how it looked when I first did it. And it's just because there's so much moisture in the air and it just gets into your hair. All right, so now I'm gonna put some makeup on and I'm just gonna clip the curls back so that I don't get makeup in it. So I am gonna be using this, uh, it's a Canadian brand. I don't think I can actually buy this anymore in the States. Uh, it's called Marcel Flawless Skin Fusion Foundation. 
Um, I bought it at Shoppers Drug Mart in Canada and the color of this one I believe was called Buff and um, Marcel is a cruelty free company so that's really important. Recently I started watching some beauty makeup tutorials online and it's incredible the amount of work that goes into creating certain looks. I mean when you're on Instagram and you see these you know, beautiful makeup looks and then you see how much work actually goes into you know, getting that look, it's, it's incredible. It's, it really is a talent. It's something that people work at for years to get to that level of skill and precision. And another thing I, I noticed about makeup is it's not just the products that you're using, it's the tools and the techniques. Like I used to be very heavy handed with makeup. Like I, I just learned this tip where um, I used to put makeup like eyeshadow on holding the brush really close to the bristles and when you do that it it applies a lot of pressure and what it means is that you're putting a lot of pigment on at once and it takes a lot more work to blend out um, and then recently I learned that if you actually hold it at the very end of the brush and it feels very awkward it almost feels like the brush is gonna fall out of your hand and at first I was like oh this can't be right it's gonna look you know it's gonna look really messy if I do it like that but it's amazing because when you hold the brush really far away from the actual bristles, it creates such an airbrushed look and the eyeshadow goes on so much more smoothly. And I'm trying to remember who taught me that tip. I think it was a YouTube channel called Alexandra's Girly Talk. I think that's her, her channel. Maybe I'll link it down below. Um, the video was about eyeshadow tips. Okay, now I'm going to do my brows and I learned another tip online that I've been using lately and that I've really found saves a lot of time and um, is really good for getting clean lines when you do your makeup and it's using tape. And so I'll show you what I've been doing. I'm by no means a makeup expert or a beauty guru, but I'm just showing you what I've been doing and I've been kind of playing around with different makeup looks and I'm just going to use my little mirror here as well. Hang on. Alex laughs at me because sometimes I'll be talking to him when I'm doing my makeup and he'll call me and I'll come out of the other room and I've got tape all over my face. You can also use a business card or a credit card um, to get these uh, lines as well. So I just put tape where I want there to be a line um, like where I want to create the look of my brows and I've got my pencil here. And I'm just going to gently do little strokes upward and this just prevents um, the you know, eyebrow color from going any lower than I want it to. And this is a really um, dark brown and my brows are actually quite dark. They're just a little bit sparse up front. And then this is an Essence uh, eyeliner brush or I guess you could use it for your eyebrows as well. And I believe it was like $2 from... Shoppers Drug Mart in Canada. So now what I'm, it's going to look very extreme when I first rip this tape off, but you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So there it is, and then it's a clean line. And then what I do is I just kind of take the remaining product on the brush and then just kind of gently um, fill in the rest of the brow. And this also really helps create a line if you want to do winged eyeliner. Uh, it's a really good hack for that. It makes it a lot easier to get a clean, sharp wing. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, now I'm going to be using some gel eyeliner from Essence. And they're a really great cruelty-free very inexpensive drugstore brand, but I really like a lot of their products. Sh 
show you how the eyeliner looks. And do the same thing with the other side. I'm using some Physicians Formula Blush. I've shown this in a video before. It smells like roses. And I believe it's from the Argan Oil um, collaboration or line that Physician Formula put out. I think it was a couple years ago now. Essence Satin Mauve. Mauve? How do you say that? And clear gloss. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day. And I just want to say that if you have been feeling at all less than lately, just know that you are worthy, you are capable, you are a beautiful individual just for being you. And I just want you to know that. All right, I love you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.